Hello everyone, my name is Driggy Forever, and today we are continuing our playthrough of the Silent Hill play novel. Alright, let's see. We were on Sybil, and uh, she is trying to get out of Silent Hill. I think this was the last line I read last time. So you can read that, we've read that last time. However, after running for a bit, Sybil's hopes were crushed. All the roads leading out of town were cut off, and it was as if the entire town was floating in the air. There was no way for anyone to enter the town. Ha! Huh. Sybil sighs deeply. She then decides to try going back the way she came. After running for a bit, she comes to another steep valley, like before. It is wide and impedes her passage. And then she became sure that it was not possible to escape from this place. Sybil felt like a bird in a cage as she walked apathetically and aimlessly through the falling snow. It was not long before a black, wriggling object appeared in her field of vision. What is that? From off in the fog, the four-legged thing moved at a slow pace as it gradually closed the distance between it and her. And then, as soon as it detected Sybil, it began to ferociously run toward her, scattering the fog as it moved. The monster. <laughs> I'm sure if I just say, just ran away, it'll just run away. We're gonna say it though, just ran away. The monster just moves right past Sybil and then continues away from her. Clearly, clearly it is headed somewhere with some purpose. Various concerns run through the back of Sybil's mind. Instinctively, she begins to chase after the monster. However, its speed is fast and it does not appear possible for Sybil to be able to catch up to it. Additionally, the thick curtain of fog is also making her pursuit difficult. Sybil continues to run for a while, but ends up completely losing sight of her target. She stops and leans against an antique lamppost and presses on her chest. She waits as the time between her continuous white breaths gradually increases and then begins walking again. Sybil is overcome with hopelessness. Being unable to escape from Silent Hill, Sybil then worried about what she should do next. Since all the people have vanished, she cannot even talk to anyone about what is happening here. I should look for the police station. Even if the person I was talking on the phone with earlier isn't there, I might be able to get some other information there. She has visited this town many times. Following the thread of her memory, she begins walking along the complicated intersecting streets. Just how long have I been walking? As she saw the word police appear from out of the fog, her entire body was completely exhausted. She opens the glass door at the entrance and heads inside. As she does this, she sees that no one is here, which is just as she had expected. The lack of any sound is painful to her ears. After she walked around the reception area for a bit, she moved toward a room that door had been left open for. The plate beside the door says meeting room. Compared to the same room at the Brahms station, this one is quite small. She looked around the room. Clunk. At the same time Sybil entered the room, one of the disorderly arranged folding chairs moved quite a bit. She readied herself. Who's there? A man jumped up right away and pointed a black handgun at Sybil. The man lowers the gun. The man slowly returns the weapon to his side. Sybil? Harry! Sorry, I thought that another monster had appeared, so I instantly hid behind a chair. Me too. All this is not good for my heart, you know. Before I came here, I found a steel pipe. I will give the handgun back to you. Like you said, I might end up shooting a human by mistake. Saying that, Harry plops the handgun into Sybil's hand. Sybil nods slightly. Have you found your daughter? No. Harry shakes his head back and forth. I thought she might be in custody at the police station, so I came here. Harry looks around the room and then speaks, but 
Just like this, there is not a single man, woman, or child here. Let's look somewhere else. There should be a church just over the river. Maybe she's in custody there. Okay. They ran out of the police station with Harry in the lead. On the way to the church, Harry tells Sybil about the events that occurred in the cafe while running out of breath. Indeed, something is wrong here. I was glad to have received the handgun from you. Cheryl doesn't have any weapons. She's just a little girl. Hoping that Cheryl would be at the church, Sybil carefully ran over the slippery asphalt. They open the heavy door of the church. The space inside is wrapped in warm calmness. It projects a very solemn feeling. No church goers, goers are present on any of the long benches which have been arranged facing the cross in front. Perhaps no one is here. Thinking this, the two of them move further in. Eventually, they noticed a woman planted on a simple chair above the altar. You are too late. The woman mutters this and stands. You are too late. The girl that you are looking for just left here. The color of Harry's face changes. Cheryl? Was it Cheryl? She's a seven-year-old girl with black hair. The woman at the altar puts one hand up to silence Harry. Even without saying this, you would understand, but I will tell you this much. The two of you will never see that girl again. My predictions are often correct. That girl knows what you are planning, yes. She will head towards her goal without being found by you. She's just a young girl. She came to this town and then went missing. If she did come here, then why did you let her go alone? Sybil screamed at the woman. Oh dear, such words. I have no obligation or reason to protect that child. And also, she stops speaking and then comes down from the altar. She was not alone. My daughter is with her. Sybil frowned. Your daughter? If those girls happen to be separated, then it would certainly be a pity. What is more, my daughter would most surely not remain silent. Harry began to speak as if the floodgates had just been opened. What are you getting at? I am Cheryl's guardian. I have a responsibility to protect her. Tell me where she's going. The hospital, but it is useless to follow after them. If you do not want to die, then you must leave this place. I am Dahlia Gillespie. If you do not wish to increase the number of corpses, then do not disturb those girls, yes? Before Dahlia finished speaking, Harry ran out of the church. Harry, wait! Sybil prepares to chase after him and looks back at Dahlia. Dahlia was there trying to suppress a laugh. All Sybil saw was Dahlia's unsightly backside. In order to resurrect myself, I will need your body. Please understand this. I understand. That is why I came here and came to see you. To think of these seven years. I never once was able to get out of bed and couldn't even move. However, everything is going according to plan and I was able to be reunited with you. But they will come after us. What should we do? Let me, let me take care of everything. Once Sybil caught up to Harry, he was having a difficult time breathing. You all right? That woman, Dahlia or something, Harry placed one hand on his chest, stopped in the street and placed his other hand on a car. I don't know for sure, but I have a feeling that that wasn't the first time that I met that woman. Long ago, I think I met her somewhere. Harry says this and begins coughing. Harry, you don't look so good. Sybil... The air seems to have gotten thin here or something. I just have to deal with it. Harry begins coughing violently. Cough, cough. Harry began to cough violently again. Are you all right? You look like you're in pain. Blood flows out from the spaces between the fingers of the hand that Harry placed over his mouth. Harry? Harry wiped his hand on his pants without surprise. It's nothing to worry about. Please don't look at me like that. But your pants are stained black with blood. Sybil stared at Harry's face. He looks lonely and even more worn down than when they first met at the cafe. Since coming here, my physical condition has been deteriorating. Once I realized this, I even found scratches all over my body. 
It's because all I am thinking of is Cheryl. That is why I am not feeling the pain. Saying that, Harry pulled up one of his pant legs. Around his calf, there was a long, dark red scar. It was a painful-looking wound, one that would be impossible to ignore. Harry. Well, it's all right. A town in which snow is falling, the name Dahlia, and her daughter is with my daughter, the fact that they are together. He lifts his head and looks at Sybil. Something, there's something that I think I know, but... It's on the tip of my tongue, but I cannot remember it. Sybil softly places her hand on Harry's shoulder. You're tired, Harry. Let's rest for a bit. Harry brushes Sybil's hand away and then begins walking while pressing one hand to his chest. Harry! Sybil once again follows behind Harry's frozen back. Unable to make out the letters on an old signboard, Sybil tries squinting. Alchemia Hospital is written in faded paint. In this building, Cheryl and Dahlia's daughter are in here. The hospital looks like ruins, and an eeriness is present that makes one hesitant, hesitant to even step inside. Sybil just happens to notice an object that looks like a pedestal next to the door. On top of it, plates of four different colors have been placed. Sybil reads the message inscribed on the pedestal aloud. The Chosen Ones must be moved to the Chosen Places once the task is complete, the guidepost leading to chaos shall appear. Harry opened the door. Inside the hospital, it is dark, and it seems that if one does not walk carefully, then they would stumble. Pictures hanging on the walls, withered plants on the receptionist's desk, and other furnishings can be faintly seen. Is your, is your daughter really in this place? I don't know, but all we can do is trust that woman from before. We don't have any other clues. Harry spoke, not expecting a reply. He slowly turned the knob of a nearby door. It appears to be locked. He lets out a long sigh. Wait, Harry. Let's split up and search. I'll start from the top floor and search heading down. You start from the bottom, then we'll meet up in the middle. That way we won't lose each other. Harry looked woeful. Sorry, I wish there was something I could do to thank you. Once we find your daughter, then you can take me out to dinner or something. Sybil smiled brightly. Sybil immediately began to run toward the wall at the end of the corridor. Once she arrived on the third floor, which should be the top floor of the building, she caught her breath and then began to search for the girl. Sybil begins to walk along the concrete wall that is dimly lit by the outside light. Several doors are on the left and right of the passage. Each door has a three-digit number plate on it, and without even looking inside, she can tell that they are hospital rooms. Cheryl, if you are there, come out. Your daddy is looking for you. Sybil's voice just reverberates and then fades into the air. She places her hand on the knob of one of the doors and turns it. It appears to be locked. Maybe Cheryl is in one of the rooms and locked it from the inside. But if Sybil's voice cannot reach her, just how should I search for Cheryl? That's it. Sybil thinks of something. If I use the key... The key. The key to the hospital room should be at the reception area. Then I can open the doors and search each room for her. To realize this after coming up to the third floor, Sybil races back down the stairs that she just ran up in order to return to the first floor. On her way down the stairs, Sybil heard footsteps as she was passing the second floor. Harry? The second floor is the same as the third. There is a central corridor with doors lined up on both walls. Harry? Is that you, Harry? There is a large window at the end of the hall. White light from the foggy outside is reflecting off the floor. Without realizing it, Sybil squinted. But... Someone is standing in front of the window. 
From the shape of the outline of the human visible in the darkness, Sybil can tell that it is not Harry. It looks like a girl. Sybil just stared at the figure and was unable to move for a bit. Just like a frog being stared down by a snake, all her movements were sealed. Cheryl? Who knows how long it was before she said that. The girl did not answer and began moving towards Sybil, as if she was gliding. Slowly, she continued moving towards Sybil. Eventually, the girl twisted her body and jerked her right hand. She made her hand into a fist, created a large bullet of light, and then looked at Sybil. What? Watch out, Sybil! Get down! It's Harry's voice. At the moment Sybil drops down, the bullet of light slices through the air and impacts into something behind her. Well, that takes care of one of them. The girl vanishes. Sybil turns and sees Harry laying face down, holding his hand to his chest. Harry! He's struggling as hard as he can to reach his hand out to Sybil. Sybil reaches over to him and sits him up. Harry, I thought that something was wrong by the time I realized. Too late. Harry, don't talk. Harry's body becomes heavy. Sybil, I'm done for. Please, won't you help Cheryl? That girl from before, that wasn't Cheryl, was it? That was... Harry, hold on. Harry. Talks about the girl. That girl was not Cheryl. Harry then begins coughing, and at the same time, vermilion liquid spatters about. Vermilion? Vermilion? Harry, don't talk anymore. Harry is crying. That was not Cheryl at all. His words seem to have something like a desire embedded somewhere within them. Harry, Harry. Harry did not speak or respond again. Sybil, who had been unable to accept the in incomprehensible events that had occurred around her up to this point, was unable to believe that the man in front of her was dead. The wind seems to be blowing outside. Sybil stared at her hands, which had become covered with blood. Instead of trying to wipe them off, she firmly grasped her handgun. Something like a kind of resolution arose in Sybil's stern look. Cheryl, I must find her and then take her home. Just who was the girl? Cheryl, or was it that woman's daughter? Concerning the incidents that have occurred in this town, no, they cannot be called incidents, but instead, concerning this enigmatic situation, I have not found one piece of conclusive evidence, and that irritates me, and there is uneasiness about the loss of my only partner. She must be frightened somewhere, Cheryl. That eerie figure of the girl. Several feelings of discontent run throughout Sybil's mind. That Dahlia might know something. However, the destination that she indicated is this place. Rather than returning to the church, it would be best to search here. Sybil had returned to the first floor to get the key to the hospital rooms, but then she noticed a door that had been left open. Creak. The door sways on its hinges as the result of wind blowing from somewhere. This draws Sybil's attention, and she moves toward the door. This is... This door was unmistakably locked and not open just before. Sybil looks in the doorway and at the same time gasps. And we're going to leave it right there on that cliffhanger. Yeah, that's where we're going to leave it. All right, guys, I hope you're enjoying this series. I'm really enjoying this visual novel. I actually really like it. I never played it before until now. Uh, yeah, if you like it, tell the like button you want to smash. And I will see you next time. You stay you. I'll stay me. Droogie forever. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching. We should conclude Sybil's story probably in the next video. So I hope you come back for the big finale. Might be two videos, but probably one. And uh, yeah, I hope you join me again. Thanks. Later.